What's up, everybody? Joe Cermelli here, host of the Cut and Retie podcast on the Penobscot River, hanging out with the boys from Old Town. Now, you know, a lot of people in this country live in close proximity to rivers. I grew up along the Delaware River in New Jersey, and even though over the years I've had some phenomenal days fishing stillwater lakes, ponds of all sizes across this country, rivers hold a special place in my heart. You know, I think a lot of anglers associate kayak fishing with still water fishing, but in reality, these are a tremendous tool for exploring moving water. Because here's the thing, in my opinion, if you pattern and learn one river, if you know how to catch fish on one river anywhere in the country, those rules apply to any river on the planet. So if you know how to fish your home river, you can find fish in any river anywhere. Three of the most important things to remember when you're trying to pattern and really learn a river. One, fish it at all different water levels. If you only fish it in the spring when the water's high, you're only gonna learn so much. Versus going in the dead of summer, even though you might think the fishing's terrible now, it's gonna be clear, you're gonna see the bottom, you're gonna see structures you didn't know what was there, and it's gonna paint a better picture of the river overall. Now, what goes hand in hand with different water levels is fishing a river in all different seasons. Fish a river throughout the year. You don't just wanna fish your river when it's fire in the summer or spring. You wanna fish it when it's a little bit slower in the winter time too, because now what's also gonna relate there is water temperatures and current. If you fish a river throughout an entire year, you're gonna figure out when the water temperature hits this, these fish are gonna be deep. When the water temperature rises here, they're gonna look for more oxygen and go to areas with faster flows. And finally, I mean, one of the biggest things you want to look for in a current system is where there's no current. So if you remember nothing else, when you're exploring a new river or trying to figure out where the fish live in your river, you're looking for rocks, trees, bank points. Anything that changes or blocks the current is generally a good place to look for fish. And that could just mean slowing it down enough where you have faster water and slower water bumping together or a complete dead spot or back current called an eddy behind a rock. But generally where there's less current amid more current is where the fish are gonna hold. And listen, I do understand that fishing moving water, especially big moving water in a kayak can be intimidating. Now there's several ways to do it. Today, as an example, we parked some trucks down at the bottom of our float, drove up to the top and we cover a nice long eight miles. But maybe that's not in the cards for you. Maybe you're fishing by yourself. And what you might have to do then is explore motorized or pedal driven kayaks that allow you to put it in one spot, explore little pieces of your river and get back to where you put in. And if that's you, you can find out everything you need to know, pick the perfect kayak for your river scenario at oldtownwatercraft.com. I think he was committed. He's committed to that particular war. That's the entire pop. Hey, I hope some of you guys come over and have some more fun and some more laughs with me on the Cut and Retie podcast. And I hope to see you guys out there on the river in your kayak, just not the ones I fish. There's plenty of people out there already. Go find a different one.